Hello and welcome back. This is video number five in a series where I'm showing you how to build a flash character rig for cutout animation. If you've stumbled upon this video on YouTube, please follow the link below because all these videos are merely illustrations to an article which has a lot of important information in its textual part. For these demonstrations I'm using Flash Professional CS6, but it does not really matter, it can be any version of Flash or Animate CC. In this part 5, I'll be showing you how to clean up and rig the head. With this done, most of the work on the traditional rig will be complete, and in the next video I will only be showing you how to convert this standard flash build into a smart magnet rig so that you can take full advantage of the refined and powerful posing and animation tools included in the EDAP tools package. As you would have probably noticed after I finished recording the last video, I put some extra work into our rabbit the most obvious would be the change of color palette instead of the original beige i went for a brighter more yellow based color because when i brought kinefox in i wanted the two to work well together the other thing that uh, probably is worth paying attention to would be this gradient that I used here for the feet it's a radial gradient which is squashed and oriented in a way so that color transition matches the curve of the feet now if we later need to add more frames with different versions of that foot say for a walk cycle when the feet bend we can always change the way the gradient is squashed so that it matches the curve of those new foot drawings. I've also used the same technique for the tail and have polished the gradients for the arms. From this point onward we'll only be working on the head so I will make the rough drawing visible and switch these all to outline mode we'll enter the head symbol and we'll have to get rid of this uh, placeholder sketch just before i do this i'd like to remind you that we have a second view of this file open here so as we work inside the head we can always go and check the main timeline how everything looks in context uh, we can do this by pressing ctrl tab if you're unfamiliar with how to open a second view for a file this is how you do it you go to window duplicate window and you open a second view it can be any view you can dig inside a symbol and you can have as many views as you need to control your progress. Okay, now this is our temporary head, which I will move away and I will guide the layer. From now on, all I will need it for would be color picking. I'll create a bunch of layers and I will start drawing a shape which would be our head shape this will be a very long video i have no doubt about it so i'll keep recording in real time but in post i will speed parts of it up because otherwise it will be completely unwatchable at this stage i'm really only marking these i'm not quite sure how these will end up looking i might even have to 
go back when I finish recording and keep polishing the design because this stuff is subtle and unfortunately while you record you're not usually doing your best so the the purpose of these recordings is to communicate and show you how things are done but there's no guarantee that while I'm recording and speaking I'm actually doing my best work okay for now I'll just lock it I'll call this layer head shape I will leave it as a shape for now we'll have to convert it to a symbol a little later but for now I'll just uh, leave it as a shape the next one I will do will be the ears so I'll start with a box again and try to replicate the shape of this ear if you remember in my previous video I mentioned that when cleaning up I try to keep the overall silhouette of my line drawings you can notice here I stay on the outer side of the, the original sketch it's not an absolute I'm, I'm trying to make the shapes look pleasing and flow nicely into one another but that's the general rule okay so this will be a symbol called ear and now I will re-register it using set reg point to transform point I will now stop this symbol so choose single frame duplicate and draw a second frame for the second ear now just to save some time and make it more watchable uh, obviously you can see that this is sped up 10 times uh, just adding a little shadow and now I'm creating the eye socket out of an ellipse then the eye white with two concentric ellipses the eyebrow converting it to a symbol the last thing that needs to be added to the face is the muzzle the muzzle is a complicated one because it contains the nose and the mouth and requires a lot of fine tuning to make it look good initially more or less I'm just blocking things out without polishing them perfectly just to have all the elements of the head in place so that I can look and assess how I'm going constant back and forth is needed to really know how you're going in this case with the rabbit the cheek I decided to be a separate symbol rather than a part of the muzzle because he has a small mouth so the smile will never go that far away so the cheek is above the eye and the muzzle can be below the eye now I've converted the, the head shape into a symbol and adding those little uh, hair bits on top two magnet targets in the head so that I can snap the ears back if I accidentally move them and some more polish to the facial oval and a few details to the eye socket 
Now we'll go back to normal speed for the eye. And I will convert the eye white to a symbol as well. Call it eye white. Now, when this is done, I'll go inside the eye white symbol and duplicate this on a top layer. Then I'll break this apart and grab the darker outline. I'll cut it and I paste it on the top layer. Now this bottom layer with the just the white will serve us as a mask as well. So it's white and mask. While the top is just a decoration. The second frame will be a closed eyes for, for a blink. I'll deal with that later. I will duplicate this, drag it here and call it mask. I'll give it only 10% opacity and lock it. I'll convert this to a mask layer and this will be our iris. Choose some color to start with and draw a circle. Another sped up section while I'm playing with the iris. Some adjustments here. Some more work on the eyebrow. And more polish on the muzzle. Just adding some definition on the frontal part of the face and the and above the nose. A little radial gradient. Getting there. wrinkles about the nose, only two of them, well, it's kind of cute enough, I guess. Change of iris color, now I'll delete the temp head and I think we're very close to finishing. I'll stop all these symbols. I'll choose single frame for all of them. Make sure that everything is a symbol and is named properly. So head shape, ear, muzzle, eye socket, eye white, iris, eye white again, cheek and brow. Okay, I'll lock these and we'll add a blink. So I'll go inside the eye. If you remember, we left a second version of the eye here. Now, this one is broken apart and the white is separate from the outline. Now here, I'll just squash the eye a little bit. For the mask I will create just a little white dot outside just somewhere here and I will make this 0% so that it's completely invisible. Now this will be the mask will be outside of the eye so when the eyes are closed we won't really see the iris. Now I'll have to choose some color 
for the closed eye, let's say just a little darker, something like this. And with a dark color, I'll just draw the closed eyelid just like this. I'll smooth it something like this. Okay, let's let's just look at it. Looks like a like it would be a decent blink. For now, what I'll do is I'll load this in the smart graphic control panel and I will link the mask. I'll call it eye mask. Say OK. And now I can see the blink within the muzzle. I will add a few more mouths and open, smiling, grumpy, sad, whatever. I'll add a couple of different types of eyebrows, but all that will be while I'm not recording in the post before I make the rig ready for download. For now, let me just show the circle and go out, delete the rough picture, delete the palette. Okay, so this rig is complete as long as we're concerned with the drawing. Now, one final thing, I need to go in the library. You can see how the Kinefox is all inside a folder. I'll create a folder called Rabbit and put all the rabbit stuff inside the rabbit folder. We have a prefix fox for the Kinefox. So I will do exactly the same. I'll use LB rename and type in rabbit space for my prefix for the rabbit and apply. All symbols are now properly named and the rig is complete. In the next video I'll be showing you how to convert this traditional flash build into your smart magnet rig. This means that when the hierarchies are established, we'll be able to use the fancy EDAP posing and animation tools the way we can use them with Kinefox for amazing and easier than ever posing and flexibility. At the moment, I'm using Kineflex on the Fox. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.